it was like a more important way of handling uh, teamwork than the regular. Uh, yeah. Okay, so the the it, it was a small time. Uh, I haven't had much experience with it, but uh, it was also a trial thing. So we were actually trying to figure out uh, how we should go about the project. So there are different kind of types of managing uh, projects. So we saw different alternatives, such as agile, and there is another method called waterfall, which uh, a requirement is just given and the deadline is given and the requirements will not change that much uh, as opposed to the agile method so uh, agile method is more like flexible and it could like uh, it, it could ship products much faster so <clears throat> but uh, unless the team is more uh, like like it's integrated much more or the team understands well with each other it's very hard mm -hmm. to actually implement agile that's what we uh, found out uh, like yeah. from waterfall perspective it's easier because the uh, requirements are defined in the every teams or every individual's work is known so they have they have their own pros and cons but Mm -hmm. For in our case, since the project was large and uh, we couldn't iterate that much, we we made some trade-offs between those two, Agile and Waterfall. Okay, um, thanks for sharing. Anyone else uh, who's ever been part of an Agile project? different what the context of agile in teams and in projects and also the this project how we can take some principles from Agile projects and implement it in our own uh, week to improve productivity or just like try and see if you know or team can uh, produce uh, okay So just before we get started with um, the context of agility, does how did you guys or what kind you have a project you're supposed to okay hi is can you hear me better now no it's, it's breaking up a bit can you guys hear me Uh, 
Um, can you guys hear me now? Yes. Okay, thank you. I'm very sorry about that. Okay, so I was saying before we get started with the context of agility, um, I want you guys to just, uh, we're going to explore how we should, we're going to optimize um, the teamwork chemistry. And I just want to know how you guys um, did your teamwork. So you've been given a project, your teammates, and yeah, and, and what to do. So you probably open our tabs Slack channel and the teams could be different and also different personalities. So you have people who would volunteer to lead teams. Others would be shy to interact. Um, the people with different strengths and weaknesses. How did you guys like handle your teamwork? And if you, um, if you decided to do um, daily standups or meetings like, uh, was there someone who was guiding you through it? Um, how did you guys handle it in works? Just one volunteer. It could be the previous week or this week. Um, just choose how you guys um, handle your teamwork. Okay, I'm gonna I'm going to pick someone. Um, Jabez, do you know? okay? Yes, Shamil. Yes. Um, can you tell us how you tried to like implement your teamwork to ensure that you give you produce like uh, results at the end of the week? And was it an easy thing to do? Yes, should I answer? or were there like a lot of uncertainties and how you yes and can you hear me Okay, so uh, last week uh, on the group work, uh, we were able to uh, assign a task among each other, dividing the task and assigning uh, tasks for uh, team members. But uh, in the middle, we had a difficulty because uh, even if we are doing our tasks, our own tasks properly, but integrating the the task was uh, a little bit difficult, uh, but uh, finally we managed uh, to integrate and submit. Uh, but from that experience, we learned, and in uh, this week's project, we tried uh, divide the task, but uh, integrate uh, early as uh, early early, so that we will not have a difficulty integrating later. So I think we have a progress on that. Uh, yeah, that was my experience. Uh, during the session, you learn some of the systematic agility. We, we we can mean different things. It could be like an agile teams that build an agile project. And the first thing to note um, about an agile project, it's those projects that um, they have like high, they're very high productive, high productive projects. 
and it's mostly it mostly follows like a framework and we're going to talk about those frameworks in details but mainly the goal is to just build uh, better products in a better way and also in a very systematic um, order so there are always some teams so for example in remote teams you can find um, some companies that employ um, agile methods so that means every day you have um, you have a team and you have a team of developers you have a scrum master and the, and everyone and the goal is for you to ensure that you finish or deliver a certain project within the specified timeline so it's always a very intense um, method and everyone is like required to be uh, highly productive um, so when we talk about agility uh, it can best be explained on this graph so initially when you're given a complex project for example a technical project at an academy it's the complexity of the terms and the topics or everything can be very high and sometimes uh, are you always, the first time you're given the document, are you always like very certain that you're going to finish this project? Um, so the first thing, okay, Shamil says no. So that, 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 at that time initially when you're given the project, it always falls on the speculation. So like, uh, what, what tools am I going to use? How am I going to integrate, how am I going to integrate these two tools together, etc. So at that time, you're very uncertain about how you're going to approach the task and it's also a very complex task so the whole context of agility is to reduce the uncertainty by reducing the complexity so your goal is to get to this facts part and this facts is like okay i know what i'm going to do here i know who's going to do this here i know the timeline the time it's going to get me to do um to finish this project etc so what before you start working on a project you have to clear all your speculations and make sure that before you start working with your team you all understand the facts that are needed for you to like complete the project so that could be in terms of um, working agreements who's going to do this are we going to have like daily stand-ups to talk about uh, projects and progress um, just all of that and in between that you always do like some explorations and like scenarios you just try a lot of things before you get to answer uh, the facts please uh so i hope i hope that's clear and if it's not clear it's going to be much more clear as we move forward yes abu Bakr. so <clears throat> so uh so this is assuming that the team works well together right exactly exactly so um the teams that's also one of the um frameworks that's needed from an agile team and we're going to look at the characteristics of agile teams in front but they're mostly characterized by the ability to um, embrace change adapt quickly to changes and deliver value through continuous improvement when we talk about continuous improvement it's um, so it's, in Scrum, they call it uh, daily increments. So if you have a project for, that takes one week to finish, every single day, your Scrum Master or your head needs to see like some increment in the project. So every single day, there has to be something delivered, something to improve on from the previous day. Um, yeah, so, uh, any questions there? Okay, so um, during Agile projects, um, so we're going to talk about the different contexts. So in real world building projects, and also we remember we're just like stealing the principles of Agile, Agile projects to improve our teamwork um, as a team here at an academy. So in real world projects, the Agile projects are usually characterized by 
how long is this project going to take and what are the costs so imagine if an investor has already like put in money and that like we need this project to be built by this and this time um, so the first thing the, the, the two main questions that as a project manager you need to ask yourself is how long is it going to take for us to deliver these tasks and what are the costs involved so that's in real world projects but when we in the context of our 10 academy challenges some important questions that we need to ask ourselves is what kind of steps do we need to take what tools are we using um, how are we going to tackle this etc if your answers to these questions are still uncertain that means you're still on the speculations part and you need to like give yourselves time to read more and then rehuddle with clear answers so um, I know you might have your first meeting and you're like, okay, you do this task, you do this task, the other one do this task. And for one person, it could be clear. For the other person, it could not be clear. So if those uncertainties exist and someone just um, keeps quiet with it or like, okay, I'm going to try and make it, um, it's going to be like hard to get to your goal of daily increments. Mm -hmm. So if there's always someone strong in the team you're always highly encouraged to like train someone else who's not very clear with that topic so elevate your team so the goal is to just move from the speculations phase to the facts phase um so generally agile projects are characterized by the following so the daily increments so that means Today we did, so there's maybe task one to 10, or I know task one can have like more than uh, other five small tasks. So the goal is on a day-to-day -day basis, did we improve or did we build on something else? And if we did not, what were the blockers that did not make us um, achieve our target and how can we improve it better? So agile projects always have uh, daily increments um, goals so and it's sometimes done in uh short development cycles so it's always like a group of developers and a scrum master and the project lead and then every single day with their tasks broken into you know the kanban boards with to do uh, ongoing and completed so every single developer is given a task on to do and then your goal is to just move um, that task on a given time from um, to do to in progress to like done so it's always characterized by short development cycles and yeah also like adaptive planning and continuous improvement and when we talk of planning we're talking about everything from meetings how regularly are we going to meet and share progress um if someone is stuck how are we going to help this person improve um more in that and then the other key thing with agile projects is the close collaboration between the team members so if a team doesn't work together the chances of you like um, finishing your projects also go low because uh, someone can give up or like oh my team member is not helping here I'm the only one doing this job alone um, etc so if the team doesn't have a close collaboration if everyone doesn't like come together to work together it's going to be really hard and then the other thing is to always uh, reflect and then see how you can adjust in future. So as a team um, come together, we're going to look at all of these things again in detail. Uh, yeah, and then the early and frequent delivery of value to stakeholders. So that's basically, I hope everyone has understood the whole concept of agile projects, agile teams, agile principles. Okay, so for you to build an agile team, um, how, how, like, is there like a framework? Is there like a system that I can follow or me as a team can follow to ensure that you build an agile project? And one of those things like Shamil said 
it could be waterfall. Um, there are different frameworks that just the goal of these frameworks is they have just written like a guidelines of systems to follow as a team uh, to ensure that the projects are delivered. So with this for this uh, class, we're going to just uh, look at Scrum framework. We're not going to look into waterfall. Uh, so Scrum is one of the methodologies that is used to build um, agile projects. And the goal of Scrum is to build better products in a very better way. And key here is a systematic way. Do we have a system that our team follows in order to ensure that we work well or produce the best? Uh, so generally, a Scrum framework always starts with an idea for stakeholders with a budget for an agile project. Um, this is in the real world, not in the Ten Academy context so as long as there's a budget for every for everything that means uh the salary for the devs um any tools or resources that you might need for you to complete that that project if the if there's a budget for that already um so that's when the project managers always start with agile projects so they could hire like a team of developers and all and yeah they ensure that they work to deliver a project that could have taken maybe one to three months can be done in less than a week and it's all just in um, the systems that they choose to follow uh, when tackling the the project so scrum is generally defined by roles and so everyone is given a role and then there's also a responsibility that each and every person has to um, make and then meetings uh, so those are the things that define scrum framework there needs to be um, someone with everyone has to know their roles and their responsibilities and meetings also that means everyone needs to be updated on how the project is going like are we meeting daily are we meeting twice every day are we meeting three times every day to share progress? Um, uh, so yeah, the whole goal is to just help the teams structure and manage their work efficiently. Um, just a question. So if if you had if you're given a project and the deadline is in one week, so between a team that have like uh, two days. Uh, not two days like if uh, if one team is doing daily meetings another team is doing like two meetings in a day and then the other ones have like okay we're just going to meet on Monday Wednesday and Friday which one which team do you think is going to produce like much better results anyone Pardon? Um, I was saying if you have a project, let's say for example that an academy project, you're given uh, one week to finish a whole project. So which team do you think would have a higher, um, would be more productive? So the team that meets daily, the, meet, the team that meets twice a day, or the team that meets on only Monday, Wednesday, and Friday? Yes, Sheila? Um, I, I think the team that meets daily. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think the team that meets daily. The twice a day, yeah. I think, is too much, but yeah. Okay, Shamil says also twice a day. Um, but yeah, but the goal is, yeah, I also think the ones that meet twice a day, it might be hard, but the whole goal is, um, are we all focused to deliver the same uh, project? And if everyone is focused, um, how, like, we should regularly share information to make sure that, um, everyone is like up to task up to bar with um 
up to up to up to bar with the current tasks. Uh, maybe sometimes meeting can be counterproductive. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we're going to look at the key components of Scrum framework. So how Scrum is um, structured, as we said before, it's always it's defined by a set of roles and responsibilities and meetings that work together to help teams structure and manage their work efficiently. So one of the main key components is you need to have a team. And normally, this team consists of a product owner, a Scrum master, and a team of developers with one goal. So Scrum is uh, one of the biggest framework that is used by a lot of developers or yeah, projects, just to ensure that they deliver high value and high quality products. So, and in defining the different roles for each and everyone here, so a product owner has one goal, and that is to build a product that makes um, as many in stakeholders as happy as possible. So that means if I build this product and I know it's going to like um, make investors invest more in your product, uh, that's the goal. Like, how am I going to build a project that actually has um, that's very useful and can bring a lot of investments. So that's the goal of the product owner. And she she or he will just be working with the team of developers and scrum masters and the uh, stakeholders mostly to always ensure that uh, they share pro they share like uh, progress between the what the developers have done and what the stakeholders want from the project uh, etc. So that's the goal of the product owner. The team of developers are like the devs who code and the, they bring products to life. Uh, and then there's a very key aspect here who's like the scrum master. So this could just be a leader um, from your team who ensures that everyone follows the Scrum values, principles, and practices. And we're going to talk about what these values, principles, and practices are because they're very key in ensuring that the team works in a very systematic way. So, um, yeah, the Scrum Master is basically just a, a team leader. And if you were at, in one point, a leader of your group, um, the, you should pay attention so you can like lead your team better in the next uh, few teams, in the next few teamworks. Uh, so after a team is formed, the Scrum team always goes for a sprint for every project. And a sprint is basically um, going for, you, you start working within a limited time. So you're going for a sprint, that means you're going to be working like on a daily basis. But before you actually start working, um, have you s is everything clear to each and every team member? Am I everyone or everyone is just like working uh, with their own ideas um, at the back of their heads? So the first thing that you guys need or the Scrum Master needs to ensure the team has before starting a project is a working agreement, a product goal or vision, and a product backlog. So a working agreement is clearly how are we going to work together as a team. So that includes responsibilities. Um, number one, so just make sure everyone in your team knows exactly what they're doing and what work uh, they're going to do it. Uh, so yeah, the working agreement involves things like the responsibilities each and every team member has to do, um, how regularly do we meet, and if we are meeting, how long will our meeting be? Is it like 10 minutes? Is it like 15 minutes? Is it like 30 minutes? Those aspects should be documented and everyone should be aware. And also like how long will that meeting takes and who's going to lead the meeting? So um, this obviously should be like the leader or the scrum master. 
And in that meeting, are you calling us to just like uh, waste our time, or are we? What are what exactly are we going to talk about in that meeting? So that agenda should be clear, so the team knows, um, and also the definition of what done is to you. So as a team, what are we going to like when we say like we're done with our project? What's going to be like? What's what's that definition to us? And yeah, and it's also, this is also like, um, like we said, um, how agile projects are like characterized by the daily increments of work or productivity. Uh, so that's what uh, is, what should be very clear before your team goes to a sprint. So understand all those responsibilities, where do we work? And I know things like when do we meet, how long, who takes the lead in the meeting, they could seem very like not useful, but in real life, if you have a team that goes into a, a meeting and everyone is like shy to speak up or like suggest ways in which you're going to um, to tackle the challenge, um, those, those small, small things that we tend to ignore can actually uh, have a big impact in our teamwork so you could find a team that goes into a meeting and everyone is just like oh shy so everyone is like shy so those are some of the things that can help you overcome uh those things so have a clear working agreement before you start with your team members and document all these things so the other thing to have is a product goal or vision which i think uh this is normally defined uh, in 10 academics defined by uh, the project you're given. So you have a goal and a vision that has always been documented there and you know what kind of, uh, what you expect from, from the project. So just making sure everyone understands the goal. So it could be that um, sometimes you're given the challenge some understand what the goal of the product is and others could be like uh, really in the dark about what's what's the final goal here what do i expect to see at the end of this project i'm still very confused and that is where someone who's like uh who who understands the project clearer needs to like inform the team very well and ensure that everyone understands what the goal of the vision is in a way you you're also helping to improve um the technical skills of your other peers and yeah you're also like building a team it's a very key aspect so i know in some teams you can find someone who's like technically strong but always has zero time for uh, the other team members team dynamics just works differently for different people and yeah we're hoping that scrum will be able to uh, reduce this in setting too the other thing that a team needs to have before going to a, a sprint is a product backlog backlog that is the list of to-do lists and if it's in progress or if it's done i know this um, um, i don't know if you guys i, I know you use um uh, github to assign tasks um to other people so that could be like your product backlog or if you can uh, use those tools like notion or yeah notion to just write to do tasks to do tasks in progress and um uh done done tasks just that's always like key to ensure that everyone understands where the team member is if this task that was assigned to this person has been done or if it's still um in progress and if you see as a team that this this task that was supposed to be done by yesterday is still not done um as a team you should come and help the person who's still like struggling to deliver that specific task so you can all move together as a team uh, so once you have all those things clear before the sprint before the sprint that is the working agreement the vision and the backlog you now go to the sprint that's uh yeah and this one explains it but it's a highly productive and collaborative period 
where a set of backlogs is selected and delivered. Remember the backlogs that we talk about for the to-do in progress done? So this is when uh, you're now starting the work. So um, you've already done your sprint planning. So that is the working agreement, your product goal or vision and backlog. And a sprint planning, you set goals based on priorities, like which one is, which which task should we tackle um, the first and which tasks can come at the last um, areas. You're going to define that as a team. So you set goals based on priorities, which one should we start with, which one should we not start with? And then, yeah. So once you have uh, all those goals or tasks, uh, the developers select the high priority backlogs and then you start working on those ones. And yeah, you can have this uh, structured in a Kanban board. Kanban board is basically just the to do in progress or done. And then uh, you have the delivery phase. So this is like the deliver when when you're going to like deliver your progress. And that could be, is it, uh, so this is to the stakeholders. Um, so for intern academy, that in that context could be um, so. On Monday, you're supposed to deliver your progress. Um, yeah, so that's basically the delivery phase of a sprint. So a very key aspect to have when doing a sprint is daily stand-ups. Um, how many team members here had daily stand-ups in their teams? Just a raise, just a raise on a hand. Mary, Sheila, that's that's a good team. Um, the rest of you, like, how long did you wait until you um, held meetings together? How many held uh, meetings after a day or two? Shamil, we met after a tutorial. How many had just one meeting <laughs> for the whole time and preferred to talk on Slack? Yes, Shamil. Or you only had like one meeting. Okay. So one of the key things that is like yeah. yes. uh-huh. Oh yes, yeah. I was just raising my hand for one meeting. You only had one meeting? Yes. Okay. And how did that how did you feel like that worked for you? Uh, it actually didn't. Okay. It's not uh -huh. that productive. Uh, uh -huh. plus the uh, thing is uh, <clears throat> uh, waiting for others to actually, to uh, have a convenient time maybe that is the reason uh, it yeah. is taking much longer time than it. yeah and that's what that's also another aspect that we talked about about how every team should like collaborate and always like take note of the inactive members and yeah you should always inform the your training ops and they can maybe reshuffle your team because it's it's not nice for you to be um very highly productive in a team of very inactive people your spirits are also going to like go low uh but yeah scrum specifies that uh, a highly productive team should always have daily stand-ups, like every day. And it also documents that during that stand-up, there are three key questions that you need to ask yourselves as a team. So what did you achieve yesterday from the goal? What are you working today on? And if there are any challenges or blockers? I know that's very like a stand-up thing for an Academy. Um, but I, I hope you, you've noticed that um, the yeah, borrowing such agile principles to 
your projects can improve um, your productivity highly. So if your team didn't have like daily stand-ups or like scrum meetings, just to ensure that everyone knows what each other person is working on. And if someone is stuck, that should be your goal for the day. Like, how are we going to help this person get over this um, challenge or blocker? Uh, yeah. And yeah, so the other thing, so after you've done the, um, after you've done the daily standard, so during the sprint, after you finish your sprint, you always, as a team, need to come and review um, how your team performed and the systems or the methods that you employed as a team. And if it worked well, and if it didn't work well again, how are you going to like improve the next time? And it's, it's sort of like a form of reflection. Um, but it's very important. It's a form of reflection as well as communication within your team. So this is assuming that everyone is like really focused on the goal and yeah, is a good team member. Uh, so that's the review. And then the retrospective is basically just uh, a, an, an, a meeting at the end of the sprint. So it's like a reflection point. So it's always led by a scrum master and that's uh, also one of the things when you were supposed to like have in the working agreement so on the daily stand-ups who's going to lead the meeting that's always mostly a scrum master so it's uh, the reflection is the last point of this the last phase of the sprint and it's led by the scrum master and he or she is supposed to inform you guys what you're supposed to take to talk about in the next 10 or 15 or 20 minutes and then you data you gather data on how you collaborated and yeah uh and then just see if how you collaborated work well or if it did not and how are you going to improve in your next sprint and then yeah you close the meeting so with that, um, now, if I may ask you again, how many of you feel like they've been to a, a sprint before? Just a sure raise of hand, aside from Shamil. I think everyone here has been to a sprint before. Um, basically just at an academy i think you can consider it as a scrum program um just from how things work you have like daily increments so that during week zero i think you had like daily submissions so after every day uh, you need to like show submissions and that that kind of pushes you out of your comfort zone so you have like um tasks to submit uh, during the other weeks, you have the interim submission, and then you also have like uh, the final submission. So we can consider the interim submission as a form of like as a small increment. Um, and for most of you who are like procrastinators, I know you you tend to work a lot on Wednesday because that's the um submission date but if you would really consider if you had like a daily submission of work you would be highly more productive than if you just were given this whole exercise and then you only have one submission date and that's on saturday what you would have covered would probably be uh lesser um so yeah that's that is basically the concept of agile principles and uh, we've also talked about the scrum framework and how it helps build um, highly productive teams so uh, the next part of this exercise will be um, uh, yeah maybe just someone as answer the last question are there some of the principles that you've taken from um from scrum principles that you would consider adding to your next teamwork that you think would benefit your team
Yes, Shamil. Uh, so, uh, one of the things would be uh, like um, having a like, daily meetings, as mentioned. Mm -hmm. Like to know, like put on progress updates, uh, yeah. like fixing issues with the team. I think that would give a solution on the spots instead of waiting for like two or three days. Yeah, they fix that problem. Yeah. So, uh, um, Sheila, um, I think if there's one thing I've learned that I think it will be great is like not going forward until um, sorry, not going forward until everyone has understood like um the goals of the project, basically. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's like a major. That's a major one. I also have two questions. So <clears throat> one of the one. Uh -huh. Um, I'm sorry, I can't hear Shami well. Can everyone hear me? Is it from my side? We can hear you. We can't hear Shami. Okay. Okay. Um, Shami is back. Maybe you can ask your question. Okay, yes, Shami. Sorry, I have had uh, some little connections. Problem. Okay, so my my question is. Uh, as we can see from the uh, uh, slides and what we have, what we have seen, mm -hmm. the 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 Scrum Master and everything, the Agile team would work for a project that runs uh, that spans a longer time. But mm -hmm. is there a better approach for, for example, we cannot uh, like ideally speaking, we must, mm -hmm. but uh, like uh, having uh, a notion set up and getting the team to online would take us more time. So it takes in a week we cannot actually. Okay. It might be difficult to uh, achieve that. So uh, mm -hmm. is there any way to create an agile team for a week? Since it would be it would might it might also change the team might also change every week. Um, so the goal is to just ensure you you have a, a clear place that every team member can see what tasks each and every person is doing. And it doesn't have to be notion really, or you can use whichever tool. I know for you, the best that works is on GitHub. There's a way you like uh, share tasks, right? So that could be that could be your like um that could be your that could be your 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 backlog so it doesn't have to be like um notion or anything just as long as everyone is aware which task the other person is doing or what your task is and the deadline um so yeah you can structure that on github that would be much more easier for you guys does that make sense uh, actually, no. But the 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 thing I'm I was trying to say was maybe this is for a huge project. It it might work for. But do you have like any recommendations for a team that works for a week? So um, let me ask you. Allocate resources or dive um, into. How exactly? So, do you, as as your team, do you have a place where everyone knows which tasks they're tackling? Uh, as as you said earlier, the the first thing, the first time we see the challenge, it would be on the uncertainty level. Where should we start? How we should go about it? Would be our first question. So, 
that's yeah. actually one point. Okay. And, uh, but we cannot actually do. Uh, it's, it's it's a little bit difficult to have every principle of Scrum implemented. So. Oh, you don't need to have like every Scrum principle implemented. Yeah. Just think what works for your team. And the goal was just to like steal a few principles from Agile Framework to help improve your project. So you don't have to follow everything, considering even there's no like uh, product owner, Scrum Master, ATC. You just need to steal the principles that or the systems that work for your team. So just basically things like, do you have a working agreement? Do you have a product backlog? Um, yeah, things like that. Is that clear? OK, thanks. But yeah, I understand when you say um, this only works for better for big projects, and that's true. But those big, big projects are always very um, productive and if there are one or two things you can steal from those principles to improve your teamwork then yeah why not okay so we have like two minutes remaining i don't need to read through the whole um exercise but basically the whole goal of this exercise is to just reflect you can use whichever uh team you are whether the previous team or the current team anything it's just um the t the whole point of this exercise is just a reflection of how you felt your team worked and how you feel like you're going to improve or be a better team player next time you have a team uh and also please note that um yeah so there are no penalties for like honest reflections so your feedback is just important because it helps to um, grow your team better. So if you say um, I wasn't a good team member or if just honest reflections on this team. So there are no penalties if someone didn't like do well or expect them to do as well as you thought. Um, it's just um, just take it from a point of honestly reflecting on how your team dynamics worked and how you're going to improve um, in future. So yeah, so this is just, so the exercise is just a small introduction of what a team is, um, ETC, and in we're hoping that in future you might find yourself in an agile team or a project and you'll be able to like understand the workings. So this is exercise is basically mostly just a reflection. Um, so during weeks three to four, even five, uh, you worked on a group challenge. And so for this exercise, you're just required to reflect on your team's participation in tackling the challenge, your experiences and your contributions to the final team and also how you're going to improve uh, your future projects. I know it can be a bit sensitive because it's not just a reflecting from your own point of view, but also your team. Um, but yeah, it's it's very important to always uh, reflect. And that was like the last um, component of Scrum Framework is the reflection or the res retrospective of how your team worked and how you're going to. So you're guided on the questions to reflect on. So like the roles and distributions and contributions of members. So uh, if the roles, if you feel like the roles of the distributions were not like well distributed, how would you do it differently next time? And how are you going to improve this? Um, so yeah, just be very honest with yourself. Uh, no penalties at all. It's a very safe space. And then the other one is like communications within the team. You just required to reflect on how that went. And if you felt like the communication was okay or not okay, if yes, how are you going to, if yes, what made it good? If no, um, are there strategies that you can employ next time to improve? 
and then also you're required to reflect on uh, balancing strengths and weaknesses of your team. So this uh, and this would come from did you understand uh, how your team did you understand did you get to know your team well did you get to know what backgrounds this one has and um, how did you like subdivide tasks to match uh, strengths or weaknesses or like yeah how did you just balance um, all of that because uh, the team can have different uh, skills so someone could be very skilled at front end the other one back end the other one at coding how did you manage to if you didn't manage again it's okay to just say it and yeah just ref it's it's basically just reflection and be honest to yourself and try to improve it uh, better next time and then the challenges and conflicts if any and how you face them uh, yeah and then just the general teamwork if you were satisfied with the outcome of the project uh, or not so each team member should submit their own reflective reports individually uh yeah ensuring confidentiality uh there's no need to like mention your team member's name if you feel like they were not active but just uh you can just refer to them as like team a team b it's it's literally just for your own sake to improve your teamwork again uh yeah and then if you guys can if you guys are still like working on the same uh projects this week can you like come together again and if there are any conflicts and you're not finishing your tasks can you guys um come back together again and see how you can plan the next uh one or two days remaining to see if you can improve your projects in any way uh yeah uh that's that's it so you're just required to uh submit a reflective report and maybe an action plan for your next season um yeah any questions you're out of time is everything clear okay thank you Thank you guys for being here. Um, I, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I hope you carry all these principles with you next time you're in a group work. Uh, yeah, I wish you all the best with your challenges and have an amazing evening or afternoon. And thanks for being here. Right.